Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're gonna be comparing the Brooks Glycerine 18 versus the Hoka One One Clifton 7. Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Runs, I want you to smash that pink button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs running community and check out the description. There are loads of cool things, including the link to where you can get both of these awesome shoes. So we've got the Clifton 7 against the Brooks Glycerine 18, both very good at doing high miles. So let's get stuck in. Right guys, so here we go. I thought this would be an excellent sort of versus video to do um, because they're sort of high miler, uh, long distance, but daily training shoes. Um, if you're new to the channel, I love the Glide Ride. Uh, and these shoes have sort of edged their way into my life a little bit, which is slightly worrying because I'm still in love with the Glide Ride. The Brooks, I've done a, a video on, and I've done a video on the Clifton 7, so check those out. But I've actually found myself enjoying these more and more. Now let's get into some of the stats and features uh, before we get into which one I prefer. Let's start with the Glycerine 18. Now this shoe is 140 pounds, which is a load of money, uh, if you ask me. Uh, you've got the DNA uh, loft in the shoe. It's got a 10 mil drop. It weighs 10.2 ounces, so it's a bit on the fat side. And you've got this um, super cool leather, um, leather, rubber, leather, outs. <laughs> I don't know why I said leather, and leather on the brain. Anyway, right, so Clifton 7, which is nice and light. Uh, the price is £125 from memory, but it is nice and light at, now where's my notes? Uh, 8.71 ounces. I didn't want to get that wrong because I did get it wrong in another video. Um, you've got the engineered mesh upper. You've got this flare heel collar, which is uh, avoiding any rubbing or chafing. So that shark fin thing at the back. You've got early stage meta rocker, obviously it's a hoker. Big slab of EVA midsole. Uh, you've got the full ground contact design, so for increased uh, traction and stability. Stack height is 29 mil, uh, it's 24 mil at the front, and you've got a five mil drop. So here we go, which one do I prefer? Well, you know what, what's interesting, actually, and I've kind of gone full circle because a couple of years ago I had version 16 of this shoe they were pink and i had version 5 of this so similar sort of time i was marathon training as i usually am and i had both actually and uh the clifton 5 was giving me blisters over 10 miles so i went out and i changed it up because uh, the aces glide ride wasn't out then um <laughs> but I went and got the glycerine uh, and it really did a good job for me. So it's kind of cool to actually compare them. I would say the Brooks fits truer to size than the Hoka. The Hoka is narrower versus the Brooks. You definitely get more room in the glycerine, but I found that the this version, the seven, which is really an updated six, mildly updated six, um, there's more room in it than I was expecting. So I did fit it, get it on there and just go out and run, which is a, a big compliment. But the glycerine 18, it, it is, it's just a great place to be over long miles. It really is. Um, with the DNA loft is, is definitely a firmer ride than this, but that's not a bad thing. And because of the, the lack of stack height versus this, um, you definitely feel a little bit more connected to the ground. The outsoles in both uh, are good. I would say the Brooks is better. I love Brooks outsoles. I think for me down the canal pass, they provide you know one of the best outsoles for me. Um, I am a little bit concerned how this will hold up. It's got elements of rubber on it, um, but it's sort of EVA rubberized. So I am concerned how that will hold up. I prefer the upper in this, the Hoka. It just seems that little bit more breathable than this. I'm loving the lightness of this shoe. I'm loving the way the fin turns away and I don't get any rubbing around there. There's definitely less in uh, around the heel um, and padding on this shoe versus this, which I actually like. Um, both have got sort of mild stability elements in the heel. Uh, see that on the heel counter? Um, the problem I have with this, I'm just trying to think, um, what's the best way to describe it? I just think 140 pounds is a lot of money for, for a shoe that effectively is you're going to get mucked up for because you're going to be doing long runs in it and stuff like that. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of money where you can get a glide ride for under hundred pounds, and that kind of puts me off. I know it's only a, uh, it's only but it's 125. Did I say? Did I get it right? By the way, 125 pounds. Yeah, I was right. 125 pounds. So you know that just seems a little bit better value for me um, if I'm comparing the two. Personally, I do though, and this is where I'm going to leave it. I do prefer the uh, Glycerine 18 out of these two. I just like the 
more sort of feeling of a, of a traditional shoe. I love Hoka's. They don't necessarily fit me that well, but I do love Hoka's. But the Brooks on those sort of longer runs, it just, I don't know. It, it's just, there's just an element of comfort you get from knowing that it's, that you, you can feel the ground a little bit more and, and you're a little bit connected to what's going on. Even though it's heavier, which this is one of the pluses and the, and the, the upper is not as breathable. I don't know. It's just it, it's just nice when you're out there. <laughs> nice. It's just it's just it's a, there's a comfort that comes from this shoe when you're out there over those longer miles. They're both very good shoes, people. If you're a Hoka fan, you're going to love this. But for me, if I had to pick out of these two, I would go for the Glycerine 18.